वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल फिजियो ट्रेंड्स दिस इज मी फिजियो प्रेम शाह एंड दिस इज द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ माई सीरीज टू मोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ द लोअर लिम इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू ऑल दैट हाउ टू अप्लाई मोबिलाइजेशन टू टेलो क्रूरल ज्वाइंट एंड सब टेलर ज्वाइंट इन शॉर्ट मोबिलाइजेशन ऑफ द एंकल ज्वाइंट For telocrural joint, articulating surfaces are lower end of the tibia and fibula, and the head of the talus. So there is a mortise formed with the help of lower end of the tibia and fibula, inside which the talus bone is fitted, and in which we can perform dorsiflexion and plantar flexion movements. So for this joint, first initially we have to find out the loose back position. and loose back position for this joint is 10 degrees of plantar flexion so as you can see this will be neutral position of the ankle and this is the relaxed position of the ankle which is 10 degrees of plantar flexion and this is the exact position which is loose back position for the talocrural joint and in which we are going to apply distraction force so for applying distraction force first the opposite side we will flex it from the knee joint so that we can focus only and only on the mobilizing limb the next part is you have to hold or make a grip with one hand just above both the malleolus because that is the proximal segment for this joint and then we have to make a first web space exactly over the joint line of the talocrural joint so how will you understand that is you have to just hold it below the lateral and medial malleolus because that is the joint line and from that with 10 degrees of plantar flexion you apply distraction force hold it for 10 to 15 seconds and then slowly release it so this is the way you can apply distraction to the talocrural joint for anterior posterior glide to the talocrural joint patient will be again in the supine lying position we have to make sure that ankle is slightly out of the couch stabilized from the proximal segment and from the distal segment which is exactly around the joint line of the talocrural joint you hold it in loose back position 10 degrees plantar flexion and then start applying the downward force for posterior glide so this is how we can give posterior glide to the talocrural joint and for anterior glide patient will be in prone lying position just be in prone lying position again the criteria is same that we have to maintain foot slightly out of the couch hold it from the proximal segment stabilize from the proximal segment and from the distal side you can start applying the downward force now here we might need to support the ankle with the help of towel or bed sheet So now like this we fold a towel or bed sheet and we place it just below the ankle joint so that it is slightly elevated as well as it supports therapist for performing the glides now for performing the anterior glide we stabilize from the proximal segment and from the distal side we start applying the downward force again maintaining the ankle joint in 10 degrees of plantar flexion So this is the way we can give anterior glide to the talocrural joint. Next is subtalar joint. Subtalar joint is formed with the articulating surface of the lower end of the talus and upper part of the calcaneum. This joint helps us to perform inversion and eversion movements. And that is why first we have to understand that how to give distraction to the subtalar joint. for applying distraction to the subtalar joint loose back position of the subtalar joint is in neutral position of the ankle so this will be the starting position or the loose back position for the subtalar joint in this therapist is going to make a cup with the hand and hold the calcaneum bone like this and exactly from the joint line of the talocrural another hand will be supporting or stabilizing the proximal segment so that when you are applying the distraction force along with it talocrural also is not going for the distraction so that is why stabilize exactly from the talocrural joint line and with the downward hand therapist tries to pull the calcaneum bone outside so that distraction force can be given to the subtalar joint again this can be hold 
for 10 to 15 seconds and then slowly released so this is the distraction technique that we can use for subtalar joint now moving forward to applying medial and lateral glide to the subtalar joint which will help us to improve inversion and eversion movement so for first i'll be explaining that how to apply lateral glide again patient's position is supine lying position foot slightly out of the couch keeping a bed sheet or towel rolled below the ankle so that ankle is in neutral position and after that with another hand from the calcaneum part therapist tries to apply lateral glide to the calcaneum now remember when you are applying the glide it should not be like there is an ankle movement like this ankle should be stable in neutral position and only glide should take place in the calcaneum bone like this so this is lateral glide and for the medial glide therapist will change the position or switch the position to the opposite direction and then therapist will again hold the proximal segment and apply medial glide to the calcaneum remember in this also ankle movement should not be there while performing the mobilization to the subtalar joint so these are the techniques that we use for mobilizing lower limb if you want to know more about mobilization you can check out my other videos where i have explained about carlton bone mobilization techniques maitland's mobilization techniques as well as grades of this mobilization and also upper limb mobilization techniques if you have any doubts regarding mobilization you can write me in the comment section i'll definitely reply you and please like share and subscribe to my channel so that i can make more and more videos like this to give you more information about physiotherapy techniques thank you so much